Hey everyone, this is Dave DeBow with another episode of the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. And today, zooming in all the way from beautiful Columbia, South Carolina, we've got a very, very accomplished, well-known real estate entrepreneur in the apartment and syndication space, Mr. Dan Hanford. Dan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Dave. Glad to have me on. Glad for you to have me on and uh, looking forward to sharing with your audience here. Awesome. Awesome. So Dan, let's jump right into it. And you've got a ton of experience around multifamily. You've been raising money for this for quite some time. I believe your portfolio is worth getting close to 400 million bucks these days. That's pretty significant. Why do you think apartment buildings are the class to be in? There's so many different options out there for real estate investing. Why do you like apartment buildings? Sure. Well, well, it's quite simple. So it's one of the most recession resistant types of assets in real estate. And the reason why is because when there is some sort of a recession or downturn, or even right now during COVID, we've seen that next to people paying for the food that, that can keep them alive, they pay for a roof over their head. And that's one of the main reasons why we like apartments. Yeah. So me too. <laughs> when, time, when times are good, things are good. And when times are bad, things are still good because everybody needs a roof over their head. And if, if the economy is kind of going in the dumpster, people are downsizing, where are they going? They're going into apartments. So it's- there's, there's three things that, is, that always do really well in, in a great economy and uh, also a bad economy. Number one is apartments. Number two is self-storage. And number three, do you know what the third one is? Alcohol. Alcohol. That's <laughs> right. Alcohol. So those are the top three things, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and nowadays, at least where we are, cannabis is, is getting up yep. there as well so that too <laughs> we won't go there but anyhow yeah it's it's amazing so dan tell us a little bit for those folks who don't know you tell us just briefly about your real estate investing journey and how you got into apartments and how you started using other people's money to buy your deals so i'll kind of bring you all the way back to when i first got out of chiropractic college so i'm actually a chiropractor by trade and when i first got out of chiropractic college I started my first practice right out of college and started to work for myself, right? Started my own business, doing the treating patients, going to the clinic every day. Crack, one of the cracking backs, that, as they say in the industry, right? Say again? Cracking backs, like you say in the, in the industry, I believe. Well, and the people who don't like chiropractic say it that way, yes. But <laughs> we usually just say we're adjusting the patients. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, we always just say, don't get, a, don't get addicted to the crack, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but one of the things I found when I first started my practice is that I there were there were I could never take a vacation without it costing me money because even though I owned my own business, I was the the the, the kind of you know uh, dancing bear, if you will, right? So if I stopped dancing, I stopped making money, and so if I wanted to go on vacation, I had to still pay my staff because I couldn't let them go for a week, right? Uh, if I wanted to do, and I had to still pay the utilities and the rent over the for the property and for the actual uh, facility and stuff, and so what I found is that I. I, I had capped my income as well because I could only see so many patients an hour. And so I was, I was maximizing where I was at. And so I, I quickly learned early on that I wanted to hire some other people, other associate chiropractors to work under me so I didn't have to do all that day-to-day -day work. And that was my first kind of foray into hiring other people to do the things that I didn't really uh, want to do. Even though I was really good at it, I just didn't really feel like that's what I wanted to do long-term. And also I wanted to be able to have that flexibility. And then fast forward a few more years, one of the things that I decided to do is integrate from just doing a chiropractic clinic to having a chiropractic and a medical clinic all in one called an MDDC clinic. And then a few years later, I actually completely removed the chiropractic services from the clinics. And all we focus on in those clinics is medical services, mostly non-surgical orthopedics and sports medicine. So we do a lot of regenerative medicine like prolotherapy, PRP, stem cell treatments, things like that. And we right now have four clinics in the state of South Carolina, one here in Columbia, got one in Charleston, Greenville, and North Augusta. And I have about 50 employees there and a medical doctor, nurse practitioner that actually run that facility for us. And I actually haven't stepped foot in those clinics in about three years because um, I had decided to step away to really focus on the real estate side of things. Because what I found is that because I had, you know, these clinics, they were debt-free clinics, so they were cash flowing very nicely, is that I was spending a lot of money on taxes, right? And, uh, and so to be able to reduce my taxable liability, 
That's when I went into the real estate game to be able to help reduce my own taxable liability. And then I didn't want to do it on a small scale like single family or you know small multis or anything like that because I had already achieved a level of success in my life at that point, and I didn't want to feel like I was going backwards, right? And so I took the same kind of business mindset and skill set and hired a mentor and started into the large apartment syndication space. And you know we uh, partnered on our first couple of deals with another group, two other groups actually. And then our very first deal we put together on our own was a 130-unit, $8.9 million property out of Greenville, South Carolina. And then fast forward to today, last year we closed a $57.6 million deal and uh, raised about $21.5 million for that property. And, uh, and so we've had a great trajectory in, our, in, our, in, our, um, in, our, in the starting of our company, um, PassiveInvesting.com. And it has really allowed us to be able to uh, acquire these higher quality assets as well. You know, last year we we acquired just over 156 million in acquisitions and raised about 61 million dollars from our investors. And uh, and so that's kind of my my brief background. Even though there's a lot of different nuances in there, but I will say that the thing that really helped me early on to be able to achieve the level of success that I have even today, as I continue to grow, is getting out of my own mind and thinking that I can do everything better than everybody else. Because I I still to this day have that problem, and it's a constant battle every day. But I have to constantly tell myself that if I can hire somebody and they can do it about 80 to 85% as well as me, then let me let somebody else do it, right? And most of the time, I'm surprised, right? They do it a whole lot better than what I could do, but it's a mindset thing for me. Yeah, definitely. It sounds to me and just understanding your background and talking with you, you're, you're one of those smart guys. So, I mean, you're very, uh, to go through chiropractic school, you have to be fairly academically inclined and and I think that's a very long, it's quite a long process to, to go through all of that, I believe. So getting that business up and running and successful and then, you know, multiplying yourself and leveraging yourself and then getting into real estate. Very, very interesting. So, okay, so you just kind of made the leap right into multifamily investing. And I know for the, for the last several years, you've been putting on uh, big events with other multifamily investors what do you, what have you seen as some of the biggest mistakes newbie capital raisers make when they come when it comes to syndicating or raising money for their deals well i think one of the biggest mistakes is i wouldn't necessarily say there's probably two of them one of them is that they don't when they're looking for when they're starting their syndication business they are constantly looking for a deal to present to their investors and they forget about trying to get more investors so when they have a deal, and I've seen this happen many times, where they get a deal, it's under contract, and it falls through because they did get the equity for it, right? Mm-hmm. And with an apartment syndication business, you always have to be looking for two different things. You have to always be finding the investors, the money. You always have to be finding the next deal. You have to have both of them going on at the same time. And so that would probably be the biggest thing that I see is, 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 is – the failure, if you will, and newbie syndicators. And then the second thing I would say, which would be very close to that, is that once they attract investors into their kind of herd or their fence or on their email list or whatever you want to call it, they, they stop there, right? They don't have a regular way of communicating with their investors and making them feel more like a person and having that relationship with their investors. They just kind of throw them on an email list and six months later, they get some random email from somebody about a, de- a deal that they have. And by that time, they don't even know who they are anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Very, very well said. So yeah, that, that just is a flashback to my first painful experience trying to raise money. I'd self-finance my deals up till then, round the cash, round the credit. Of course, that's when the perfect deal falls in your lap and you hear all this stuff. Hey, find a good deal. The money will find you. No, not necessarily. <laughs> not true. You're right. Because when you got that deal on the go, now you're in a position of need. Now you are desperately chasing after people for their money and they can kind of smell that, can't they, Dan? It, it just kind of, it, it almost repels them because you're desperate, you're needy, and that is kind of creepy. <laughs> so that, yeah, I, 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 never, I never want my investors to feel like I need their money. Right. So whenever, I mean, I, there's many times where I've been on a phone call with an investor and they're drilling me with questions about an offering that we put together, right? And I can just feel and sense that they're just not ready. And I push back. I'm like, listen, Dave, I don't think this is the right opportunity for you. You got a lot of great questions, but I think right now I'm sensing you're a little uncomfortable. So why don't you just sit this one out? 
It's okay. It's not a problem. I'll remove your, 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 your commitment, your soft reserve. I have backup investors. So I'm going to remove you on this deal and then just sit back and watch and observe. And maybe the next one you'll be able to be ready to jump into. And you'd be surprised at how many times those people are like, oh, no, 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 no. I definitely want to invest, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, hey, please, David. And isn't that an amazing position to be in, Dan? Because so many, like you're saying, so many other people, they're, they're, they got the deal. Now they're chasing after the money and they're, it's almost like a beggar with their hat in their hand. They're, they're begging for, for somebody to invest with them. Whereas when you position yourself properly and you've done that second part, where you're constantly top of mind with that communication, that marketing, that ongoing thing, so they aren't just hearing from you sporadically when you've got a deal on the go, then you are in the position where you can pick and choose who you bring on as your investor partners. Very well, right. and one of the things that I also suggest if for, for active syndicators to do is make sure that you have more than just an email to be able to communicate with your investors. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we do on every phone call with an investor is we make sure we get their physical mailing address. Yes, that's correct. Their physical address. So we can actually put a stamp on something and send it to them, right? And so every single month, we are writing a 12 to 16 page newsletter, really high quality, high gloss, uh, a perfect bound and a really done, really done, well done uh, newsletter and sending it to our investors so they have that communication with us. And the reason why we started that is because our email list is very well curated and that we have about a 52 to 53% open rate with our emails to our investors, which yeah. if anybody knows anything about anything about uh, online marketing and email marketing, that's a phenomenal open rate. You know, most of the people are good if they can get at least about 15 to 20%, right? Obviously we, we curate that list very well. And so it's a really high rate, but I still look, look at that and go, that's almost 50% of our investors that aren't even opening our emails. Right. So how can we get them to be able to still hear from us and communicate with us through another, another channel? And that's where we started to do the, the, the actual newsletter. And we also use that for our referrals. So we had last, last year, I had an investor um, email me and say, hey, a, a friend of mine is receiving your newsletter. I'm not one of your investors. I want to be, can I get on your, your, your newsletter list? And I was like, yes, of course, absolutely, right? And so I put him on the list and I was thinking, I was like, we're already mailing these newsletters to our investors. Why don't we make it easy for them to refer people to us? And so what we did is we actually printed up a second copy of the newsletter. We shrunk wrapped that newsletter so that we separated in the, in the actual package we sent out. And we put a, stick, a sticker on it that said, on th this, this is a second copy printed for you to be able to hand off to a friend, family, family member, or coworker to be able to spread the word about what we're doing at PassiveInvesting.com. Very, very, very smart. And then hopefully in that shrink-wrapped version, you've got all sorts of information for that person so they know how they can opt in, become part of your list, sign up. Absolutely. Have a yep. phone call so that you can start that relationship. Yeah, very, that's brilliant. Brilliant, Dan. So much more than just a pretty face. You got, you got a lot going on. <laughs> hey, I tried, Dave. I tried. That's what happens is if you're, if you're watching the video portion of this, Zoom has that nice Zoom filter. So it gets all my wrinkles out and everything. <laughs> I got to find that filter, man. I tell you, <laughs> miss it out. <laughs> Add some air too. That, that is awesome, Dan. Um, so yeah, I love what you're doing with the marketing. So just to get an idea, with, when somebody comes on to your, to your list uh, at your website, and you've got a very nice website, uh, passiveinvesting.com, so you make them jump through a few ho hoops because before they can they can opt in. You're really only looking for accredited investors because those are the folks that you really want to work with. So let's say somebody opts into your website, they're going to start getting your your emails. I would imagine. Uh, what else are you trying to get them to do right off the get go? We want to schedule a phone call with them. So you know most of our offerings right now are done via 506 Charlie under Regulation D, and so we can only accept those accredited investors. But we also know that even though we don't have to have those one-on-one -on -one phone calls with our investors, because on a 506 Charlie, you don't have to have that prior existing relationship documented, it's still important to be able to create a relationship with your investor to have those phone calls. And so for us, we always try to get our investors on a phone call with us so we can create that rapport, create that connection with them, and make sure that they understand who we are and make sure that, that their goals still align with what our goals are and it also allows us to, again, start that relationship with them. Yeah, very, very smart. So then they're on the list. Hopefully, they've had a phone call. They have the phone call. You're going to get the full mailing address. They're going to get, sounds like, monthly electronic 
newsletters plus monthly physical news right that's awesome uh do you do anything else do you do like uh regular videos for them do you do webinars for people when you've got a deal on the go what 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 are you doing when you've got a a new project you need to raise 20 million bucks for sure so when we actually are raising money for a deal then we'll send them an email to say hey new deal alert Here's this, the business plan that we're projecting, that we're doing on this particular plan. Here are the projections for the returns that we have based on our initial underwriting on the project. Here's a link to the investment summary on the deal. And then here's a link to a webinar that we're gonna do on it to kind of give you a nice overview and talk to all three of the managing partners and discuss kind of and have any of your questions answered and things like that. And it's also recorded and we'll send that out afterwards as well. And then one of the other unique things that we do that I have not seen too many operators do, which we have found lots of success with it, is we take our investment offering memorandum and we actually print it up and we will mail it to every single one of our investors that is on our email, on our, our, our newsletter list, right? That's receiving that physical mail because now we're going to get 100% open rate and we don't send it in a white envelope like our newsletters, right? Our newsletters, we just send out on a regular, you know, first class mail. But when we send out these new deal alert packages to our investors, we put them in a priority mail envelope so it actually gets to them first right away, right? Usually one to three days. But then I also want to make sure that they know that it's important, it's special. I want them to open it up right away. And so we put it in those kind of express style envelopes so that they will see that and they'll want to open it right away as well. Yeah. And of course, that, that involves a lot of extra expense, but you understand very, very well the lifetime worth of even one of these investors to you. So that's, it's, it's pennies compared to the return that you're going to be getting. And, and that's all you're able to referrals too, because there's yeah. those investors are proud of their investment. They're going to go show this trophy off to their other friends and family members too. Yeah. Very, very, very smart, Dan. Well, you're a very smart guy and time flies when we're having fun here, Dan. So if, if people want to find out more about you and your company and people want to find out more about, uh, uh, your, you know, the, the educational type stuff that you guys do, what can they do? Sure. So I'm going to give you three ways. So the first one is if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, that's where I do a lot of my, my, my content and articles and things like that. You can just go to linkwithdan.com and it'll bring you straight to my LinkedIn profile. The second thing you can do is just go to multifamilyinvestornation.com. Sign up for our free weekly webinars that we do every single week. We've been doing it for about two years now. You can also find all the recordings on our YouTube channel as well, just multifamily investor nation. And of course, you can jump over to passiveinvesting.com. We mentioned it a couple of times throughout the podcast today. If you want to join us on some of our future opportunities. Awesome, Dan. Thank you very much for sharing some of your insights and your very smart uh, marketing ideas. I appreciate it. Well, hey there, thanks for tuning into the Property Profits podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes, give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.